Hi there, this is Yanis from the Arcweave team, and this is a double video release on our new plugin for the Godot game engine. The last few months, one of our top goals has been integrating Arcweave with the most popular game engines. This plugin for Godot is our pilot, with Unity and Unreal soon to follow. To showcase the plugin, we released it along with a couple of demo games. The first one is a simple Choose Your Path game, which uses our example project, The Castle, and its UI is similar to Arcweave's own play mode. The second one is a short point-and-click adventure called Regrets, and this is the one we will use in these two episodes to show how you can transfer content and logic from your Arcweave project into your Godot game. We encourage you to explore both demos to familiarize yourself with our Godot plugin. You can find the links to both projects' repositories in this video's description. A quick note, exporting for our official game engine plugins is a pro feature, exclusive to the Pro and Team Arcweave accounts. To follow this tutorial, you will need three things. To download and install the Arcweave plugin for Godot, to download Regrets as a Godot project, and to download Regrets as an Arcweave project. You can find all the necessary links and assets in this video's description. Let's first see where we can find and how we can install the Arcweave plugin in a Godot project. Open the Godot game engine and start a new project. I'll just name this test plugin, create the folder and create an edit. If we go to the menu at the top and center of Godot, we'll find the Asset Library tab, where uh, we search for plugins and demos for the Godot game engine. Now, if we click here and search for Arcweave, it will be the only one coming up, the Arcweave Godot plugin. So now we click Download, and then install. We see there are no conflicts with our project, of course, because our project is blank, and we install. So, yes, successfully installed. OK. When we install a plugin, uh, Godot creates a folder called add-ons, and this is where, this is a convention of Godot, and this is where all plugins go in any project. And here is our plugin. The second thing we need to do is actually enable the plugin. So we go to Project, Project Settings, Plugins tab, and here is our plugin. And we just need to tick the status to become enabled. So close. And now you will notice that there is a new tab here on the top right called Arcweave. But more on that a little later. So we're done here. We won't be doing any work in this project. Uh, we won't be needing it anymore. To see the plugin in action, let's instead download Regrets, our example project. To do that, we need to visit the repository for Regrets on GitHub. You can find the link in the description of this video. Once here, we can download the game as both an Arcweave and a Godot project. We just need to go to this green button here that says Code and click on it and download Zip. We now go and extract the Zip file. And let's open the folder that it contains. So, um, this folder contains everything we need, both for Godot and for Arcweave. If we go to this folder here, Arcweave Project, uh, this one contains a file called regrets.arcweave. And this is the file that we can import once we go to our uh, projects here on Arcweave. If you are a pro or a team account holder, you will have this option down here that says import project. And this is what we need to do now. We go to our downloads, the folder, the Arcweave project folder, and this is the regrets.arcweave. Open that. And here it is. Now we can, of course, rename it so it doesn't include the word restored. And it's just called regrets. 
Once in the project, we can start from the README board. Of course, it contains the same instructions that we are going through anyway in this video, so we can just skip it for now. Uh, the rest of the the rest of the boards contain the game itself. So the events board actually contains an introduction monologue of the player and the introduction and the finale monologue. So these are two um, short dialogue trees. The map board contains a representation of the game's geography with its two main rooms and the objects that we can interact with. The player actions board contains the responses for the possible actions the player can take, like uh, examine the grand piano or open the wooden door. And uh, to avoid a very chaotic result, all these response elements point to jumpers. And the jumpers take us to other boards where the actual dialogue trees are. So if we go to uh, examine the computer, the Amstrad, we get to uh, another board called Object Responses, which includes all the tree for the Examine Amstrad action. Now, in this video, we will not be discussing the system we follow to associate a player command with the elements of the board. If you would like to know more on that, you can read the game's README file in their repository. So just go down here and here's uh, more information on this. What we will do, though, is go and check how this plays out on play mode. So if we go to events, we see that the starting element is this element here. And then we have a short monologue that says that, that this is the player character, or at least this used to be the player character while we were writing. These are all reference images. And uh, the player says, hey... This place feels familiar. It doesn't exactly it doesn't exactly look like it, but it feels like my childhood bedroom. And then there's a choice. There's an option that says I need some help, and another one saying I'll explore a bit. So now let's hit play and see how this plays out on Arquive's play mode. Hey, this place feels familiar. There's a pause. It doesn't exactly look like it, but it feels like my childhood bedroom. And then we get the choice of exploring a bit or I need some help. So if we click I need some help, uh, we get I need some help with all this. Perhaps this white piece of paper on the cork board gives some instructions. And um, he refers to this white piece of paper here. Of course, this is a reference image and there's no way we can interact with it. Uh, but... Once we get in the Godot game engine, all this will come alive. Good, now let's see how this will eventually transfer to Godot. We first need to open the, uh, the regrets project inside Godot. So we open the game engine and click import. And then we have to navigate to our downloads or uh, wherever you have uh, saved that zip file, wherever you have extracted it. Uh, go inside there. Um, we don't need this folder anymore, the Arquive project folder, but what we need is the project.godot file. Uh, so we open that and import and edit. And here it is. Now, if we go to project, project settings, and the plugins, we see that the Arquive plugin is already installed and enabled. We won't get into the details of how this Godot project works. Again, you can find information in the README file in the project's repository. What we are interested in now is to see how the data gets transferred from Arquive to the Godot engine. So, uh, yeah, before anything else, let's hit play. And first we get to our intro screen. Let me just make this uh, full screen. Okay. So now, once I click New Game, the game will start right away and the introduction dialogue will start playing just as we saw it in the uh, Arquive project. So let's have a look at that. I do warn you, the player sprite has changed. But other than that, the dialogue plays out in the same way. So New Game. Hey. Um, this place feels familiar. 
I don't know if you remember, there's a pause here, and then it doesn't exactly look like it, but it feels uh, like my childhood bedroom. Okay, so then there is the choice. Uh, I need some help with all this. Perhaps this white piece of paper on the corkboard gives some instructions. Let's click on it with the mouse and then choose the magnifying glass icon, shall we? Okay, so now we can, it's a point and click adventure. We can just go around the room, we can examine things, uh, examine the white piece of paper or take the page, or we can uh, take something like take the computer. Let's pretend this is actually my room. Cool. So now we have the computer in our inventory. Well, that was it for this first episode. You're welcome to play the whole game by yourselves, or even better, jump straight into the second video, where we will demonstrate how you can export your game data from Arqueave to Godot, or transfer them like magic through Arqueave's web API. If you find our videos helpful, please consider subscribing to Arqueave's official YouTube channel. You can find us, the Arqueave team, hanging out on our Discord server. And of course, you can follow Arqueave on Twitter, Facebook and LinkedIn. I'm Yanis from Arqueave, thank you so much for watching, and let those games begin!